Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we finally turn to talking about the up and coming Democratic presidential candidate, Andrew Yang. This Asian American came to popularity when he started getting buzz in the media over his universal basic income platform. Basically, Yang wants to give people free money, around $1,000 a month or something like that. And needless to say, this kind of proposal got him some much needed attention. Yang went from a nobody to semi famous in almost no time. Things even culminating in an appearance on The Joe Rogan Show about two months ago. That really kicked him off. And since then, Yang has admittedly gained some steam, even inspiring a growing group of supporters called the Yang Gang. I think his initial appeal was obviously the free money idea. Who doesn't like the idea of free money? Well, actually, most conservatives and even some rational liberals, we realized this idea was stupid from the get-go. But our ridiculing of Yang only got him more attention. And for some nobody like him, that's exactly the kind of kick his campaign needed. And since then, Yang has also admittedly come up with some decent talking points, even becoming known as one of the more rational Democratic candidates out there today. But that's not really saying much either, since most of these Dems have gone full-blown socialist, racist, and, of course, social justice warrior. And also, there's a number of lib candidates who are offering free money in other ways. While Yang wants to give free money to everyone, other Democrats are trying to give reparations to black people because of slavery, which, of course, ended 150 years ago. So yeah, at least Yang's proposal isn't as racist or offensive as reparations. But it is just as stupid an idea, make no mistake. Now, with all that said, you might think that Yang isn't motivated by race or identity politics. And that might have been true before, but now, with some recent developments, it's become pretty apparent that Yang is just as bad as any other liberal on the left. Yang recently appeared in a CNN town hall this past weekend and, well, you could say he let his freak flag fly there. Meaning, he showed that he's just as obsessed about race and with promoting minorities, while also demeaning whites. Well, Yang is just as bad as the rest of them on these fronts. Yeah, that town hall had a lot of talk about marginalizing Asians versus whites and even some digs about how Puerto Rico would be a state if it was white. Yeah, it was some real telling and interesting race-based stuff coming from Yang to say the least. So with all that said, let's go ahead and start our coverage of it by going over his comments about being the opposite of Trump, whatever that means. Take a look at this video from the town hall and you'll see what I'm talking about. When I was in Iowa, uh, someone came up to me and said he cannot wait to see me debate Donald Trump because I'm laser focused on the problems I got him elected, but I'm his polar opposite. And what I've been saying is the opposite of Donald Trump is an Asian man who likes math. <laughs> Cute joke, dude. And it sounds like that liberal echo chamber at CNN really ate that shit up too, but you're not going to win the hearts and minds of many voters by being a complete racist. Think about it. The implication of that statement is, first, Asians are the opposite of whites. Don't know where he's getting that from, though, because whites and Asians actually get along great in this country. And we have lots of similarities, too, like hard work ethics and strong families. I guess in Yang's mind, he thinks minorities are the opposite of majorities. And in America's case, that means whites are the opposite of all the minorities. And with that implication, Yang is kind of saying that whites are bad and minorities are good. At least that's my take on it. And that's coming from an American white guy. I think that's how we would see it. Then later, Yang goes on to say he's good at math, implying Trump isn't, which is completely wrong and untrue. Trump is a billionaire with properties all over the world. He's run many businesses for decades and been successful. And then he became president and turned our economy for the better. The economy and the country are doing better than ever. But somehow, according to Yang, Trump did all of this without being good at math? Please. And doesn't this imply that all whites are bad at math too? At the very least, Yang is riffing on that stereotype that Asians are better at math. And while that's positive and is being used to slam Trump here so they let him get away with it, but at the same time, it's pretty hypocritical since most Democrats would discount all stereotypes like this, even the positive ones. Shit, I even went over an Adam Ruins Everything video a while back that was trying to debunk this very stereotype about Asians being good at math. Pretty hypocritical for the left wingers, but I can't say I'm surprised about this either. Uh, the truth is that there's this massive appetite among Americans for solutions that will actually improve their lives. I am getting many, many Trump supporters uh, to join uh, and support my campaign, as well as uh, conservatives, independents, libertarians, and of course, Democrats and progressives. I am the candidate to beat Donald Trump 
because I'm focused on solving the problems that got him elected in the first place. Yeah, well, one of those problems was the terrible use of identity politics by left-wingers like you. You say you were addressing the problems that got Trump elected, which resulted in our country becoming better than ever, by the way, but really, Yang is just feeding into those problems here and making them worse. Make no mistake, guys, this is undercover, low-key anti-whiteness. The same kind of anti-white rhetoric that ruined the Democratic Party and made Americans elect Trump in the first place. And this is only the beginning of Yang going full-blown identity politics. Politics. In this next video, Andrew distances himself from whites even further. When confronted about the supposed white nationalists who are supporting him, the video is called Andrew Yang Pressed on Support from White Nationalists. And I have to say, right out the gate, before we even start, what the heck is CNN talking about? This is some kind of clickbait or something. And CNN and other liberals always throw around this white nationalist term, as if it's equivalent to being a white supremacist or a KKK member or a German Nazi, when it's really not. White nationalist is a term used instead of white supremacy here. Because because they can't find any legitimate, noteworthy white supremacists out there, so they play word games and call them white nationalists. But really, if we're going by the real definition, white nationalist just means you're a white person who loves your country. There's nothing wrong with that. So yeah, it's basically kind of a racial slur directed at whites. And one would hope a wannabe respected candidate would call this sort of word game out, but no. Andrew Yang goes right along with it, as you'll soon see. Let's go ahead and take a look. Well, uh, it made me always want to stick up for the underdog. Uh, the person who was left out or marginalized or ignored. Uh, and so when I grew up, uh, one, I'm a Mets fan still, uh, which they're like a perennial underdog. You lost me at marginalized, Yang. Marginalized is a bullshit liberal buzzword used to try and paint minorities as these eternal victims. You're not. Just because you're a minority in a country doesn't mean you're automatically marginalized or a victim. It just doesn't work that way. What I do see as true here is this. Yang sees himself as an underdog, and he wants to embrace this and speak for the underdog image. Too bad Yang is some rich nobody, and he's also Asian, which is one of the most successful and, dare I say, privileged minorities in in America. In fact, Asians are doing so well, Democrats will barely recognize them as minorities. So, no, I'm not buying into this minority, marginalized, underdog, woe is me bullcrap. Really, Yang just wants to pander to minorities and also, of course, he wants to ignore and belittle whites. Mr. Yang, you may know that white nationalists are supporting you online. They seem to have seized on some of your statements, which they say are proof that you are particularly concerned about white people. Why do you think they're drawn to your candidacy? You know, it, it's been a point of confusion because I don't look much like a white nationalist. <laughs> uh. What does a white nationalist look like exactly? He's basically making a joke that says, hey guys, I'm not white, ha ha ha. And everyone at CNN laughs too because thank God he's not white, you know, screw white people. At least that's what they're thinking. And I mean, just listen to this reporter lady when she says, you're concerned about white people as if that's wrong or something. No lady, being concerned about white people is equivalent to being concerned about America and its citizens. There's nothing wrong with standing up for whites either, even though CNN implies that's evil or something. Really, this is again, anti-white racism. If you look at someone like they are crazy for being nice to white people, you just might be the real racist here. And also, again, I'm sick of this implied and assumed implication that white nationalists are evil racists. They're not. And if they were, you would have some sort of argument to prove that. CNN would have examples of white nationalists and their racism, but they don't, so they just pretend it's so obvious that they don't have to defend the statement and prove it's true. And as we can see, Andrew Yang isn't quite strong enough to fight against this bullshit, so it looks like he's going to just go right along with it. I, I retweeted the New York Times saying that um, that um, that Americans are dying of opiates in record numbers, um, so much so that more people are dying than being born in various communities. And those communities were largely white communities in the, the Midwest and the South. Um, so I've completely disavowed any of that support. I don't want the support of anyone who has any kind of agenda that's different than the agenda of this campaign. So basically, you disavow the support of white people. Well done, Andrew Yang. I think that's the kind of comment that could lose you a whole election in America, too. Make no mistake, guys. People are getting more sick and tired of this anti-white shit than ever. It never ends. And sure, you see more liberals and anti-white people spreading their messages on TV like this, but they are just a small and vocal minority. So no need to worry, because whites still have the numbers here in this country. And funny enough, this is the kind of anti-whiteness that got Trump elected in the first place. So 
although Yang thinks he's fixing the problems that got Trump elected, actually, he's just making them worse. Finally, let's finish strong here with one more pro-identity politics moment from Andrew Yang's town hall. This time, he has an interesting take on Puerto Rico, the American territory, and the Caribbean. Here's a video showing why Andrew Yang thinks this American territory hasn't become a state yet. Let's go ahead and take a look. As a gay African-American senior citizen who lives in the poorest ward in the District of Columbia, I am intimately and acutely aware of what it means to be marginalized and neglected. Wow, that's quite the introduction right there, guy. This guy is claiming like 10 victimhood cards at once. Jeez. It's not some kind of competition, dude. And being gay or black doesn't really make you special either. So calm down, man. Damn. Looks to me like the CNN town hall atmosphere is getting really cringy, huh? Everyone is trying to out-victim everyone else. I'm a gay black Jew who's poor and blind and deaf in one ear, and I'm also allergic to peanut butter. Feel sorry for me. I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, but this guy asking the question really isn't far from that. And the fact that Andrew Andrew Yang feels compelled to take him seriously really says a lot too. But I'm 100% for DC statehood. Uh, you should have been a state a long time ago. I'm also for Puerto Rican statehood, um, which is also long overdue. And one of the, the, um, the it's, it's like a statement I make is that if Puerto Ricans looked like Swedes, they would have been Americans a long time ago. <laughs> really, Yang? Really? I don't think you quite thought that one through, dude. First of all, this implies America is racist and doesn't want to make non-white places into states. Totally not true. Our last two states kind of proved that, too. Alaska and Hawaii weren't white states exactly until Americans eventually spread out over there, populated and modernized it over the years. So, no, I don't think this has anything to do with their race, dude. At least not for us. Really, and ironically enough, the whole reason these liberals and SJWs want to make D.C. and Puerto Rico states is because they are black or brown, and they know they will most likely vote for Democrats in the end. So yeah, it looks like the liberals are once again projecting. They're pretending we're the ones making things about race and politics when, really, it's them once again. And in my opinion, we have enough states, and we have enough areas and territories to worry about already here in America. So making big changes like this really isn't necessary. The only benefit would be to the Democrats, who are clearly pulling this shit because they can't win elections anymore. That's why they want to try and change the rules every year. Just like how they wanted to change our elections from the ground up by removing the electoral college. Well, this making more states idea that's being suggested is being done for the same kinds of reasons. And it's just as absurd too. In the end, if Democrats really want to win elections again, doubling down on anti-white, pro-minority identity politics isn't the way to go. This tactic is a big part of why Hillary Clinton lost in 2016. And if the new Democratic candidates like Andrew Yang don't change things up, they're setting themselves up to lose in 2020 as well. What do you guys think? Is giving everyone free money so they vote for you a good idea? Should Andrew Yang be bashing whites in America like this, this early in his campaign? And why do you think they really want to make DC and Puerto Rico states? Because I think it's pretty clear it's being suggested because they want more minorities to vote for Democrats. Comment your thoughts on everything below and thanks for watching No Bullshit. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and we'll see you all next time.